Good morning, everyone. So uh, it's my great pleasure to introduce uh, my work uh, uh, sponsored by Cure Cancer this year. So in this talk, I'm going to talk about understanding uh, tumor immunogenicity and drug resistance of triple negative breast cancer. Um, so in this talk, I'm going to briefly introduce um, the project, the, the aim and the plan that we are going to do in the project and the expected outcomes from this project. So um, this talk will briefly cover several topics. Um, first one is going to briefly introduce myself, and also uh, we're going to explain why we target brain negative, uh, uh, triple negative breast cancer in this project, and what we are uh, uh, specifically investigating, and also uh, the plan and uh, the expected outcomes from the project. Um, so a little bit about myself. Um, so basically, um, I got my master. I have a bachelor and a master's from China. So basically, in my master, bac uh, bachelor and master's, I basically did computation, uh, computation, uh, computer science, and machine learning, data mining stuff. So um, I finished my PhD uh, at 2016, uh, at Monash University. So where I did uh, my thesis about protein structure function and the association with the with, with disease. So after I finish um, my PhD, I continued working in at Monash University with Professor Jen Lee and Professor Tony Purcell, uh, where I investigated the methodologies to integrate and uh, analyze multi-omic data uh, with uh, uh, immunopeptomic data as a, as a special focus, because uh, this is what uh, Tony has been doing. So fortunately, I got sponsored by uh, HMRC, uh, Peter Doherty, uh, sorry, CJ Martin uh, Fellowship. So I worked at uh, uh, ETH Zurich for the first two years with Professor Rudy Ebersold, who is uh, um, the pioneer in proteomic studies. Um, and uh, I went back to Monash in 2020 uh, to just continue uh, with my fellowship with Tony. So now I'm currently sponsored by uh, Q Cancer. Uh, so I'm working on uh, uh, proteomics immunopeptome analysis for triple, ne triple negative breast cancer. So the, I think this is a big question. So why we are targeting triple negative breast cancer? So there are some uh, uh, facts uh, about triple negative breast cancer. So TMBC is actually lacks expression of three uh, receptors. So that's why it's called triple negative. Um, it is a highly invasive in heterogeneous cancer. And also 15% uh, of the breast cancer cases are tri active, uh, basically triple negative breast cancer. So breast, uh, triple negative breast cancer is featured by a greater tendency for uh, re recurrence. And also the major uh, treatment for triple negative breast cancer is mainly surgery, chemo, and radiotherapies. But uh, uh, most of the chemo and radiotherapies are not very effective because, they, uh, because of the high uh, reoccurrence. So most of the patients will have the cancer back uh, within several years after treatment. So we are now targeting the immunotherapy uh, uh, for triple negative breast cancer, but the problem is we are not, we now don't really have a well-defined molecular targets for immunotherapy uh, for treat, treating uh, the triple negative breast cancers. So what we are targeting in this project. So before that, I want to give you a brief introduction about what adapt, uh, adaptive immun immunity work, uh, how uh, 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 adaptive immunity works. So basically, I draw this as a as a uh, uh, illustration. So, for example, you have a map, and you can see all the uh, so all the rows here, and also all the houses. So, if we see the house as a uh, cell and the road as a wing, so you can see uh, we 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 I use the police car actually recruiting um, on the roads just to monitor whether every house is fine. So, if we see if we regard it as a T cell, and we regard each house as a cell, so basically, when unfortunately one cell got cancerous, uh, something wrong, can something wrong happening in the cell, if it can send a message to the police or to the car recruiting on the road, so the T cell will be able to understand, will be recognize the problem with the the, the 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 house is currently problematic and it should take some actions so the key is the send is the message that the house sent to outside so i use this metaphor just to explain how our immune system works when the cancer when, when this 
and the cell is becoming cancerous. So we actually call this signal in our body a cancer epitope. So this is more of a um, more scientific illustration of this. So basically, let's say if this protein, uh, if this cell is getting cancerous, so usually this protein is actually being downgraded or degra degraded to uh, or chopped to uh, peptides. So these peptides will be presented, um, will be processed and then presented by uh, the uh, the protein complex, uh, which is called the majority histocomb. Uh, Compatibility complex or HLA in human to present it to the cell surface. So this peptide here presented here will be able to recognized by T cell if T cell can recognize that this uh, signal peptides present something, uh, uh, some information about the cell. And for example, if the signal with the peptides can tell the T cell that this cell is becoming cancerous, and well, in the ideal situation the T cell can actually um, uh, uh, take some actions to uh, treat this situation. Yeah, but uh, as you can see here, so we, we so this whole process is called antigen processing and presentation. And in this process, basically we have a lot of protein complexes involved in this uh, 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 process. So such as, for example, like immune ribosome, uh, ubiquitination proteasome assemblies, and many, many other complexes. So the question is, how we can, how can we actually uh, identify these protein complexes? And uh, can we identify the contributions of these complexes in terms of contributing these peptides or loading, processing and loading this uh, protein, uh, these peptides to the cell surface for uh, triggering uh, T cell immune responses? So, Protein complex is actually the most functional macro molecules in our body. So basically we started, we all know about DNA, which is the uh, inheritance, which is the very basic thing that we got from our parents. And then this DNA transcribed to RNAs and then translated to proteins. So we have actually, for example, like several proteins working separately, but actually in our body. So most of the proteins, they work as a team. So basically, uh, they bind with each other just to uh, work as a, as a, as a functional, module, uh, functional module in the body. So I use this metaphor, like for example, when you build a house, you have some blueprint in the beginning, and then we have all the workers, and then workers may uh, form different teams to work on different parts of the house. So that's how we got all these complexes working in different uh, body parts to perform very important biological functions. So this is an um, example showing the uh, structures of protein, multiple protein complexes. You can see uh, the cyan, the green one, this is a HLA uh, uh, complex. And also we have the T cell recognition, T cell receptors here. So as you can see in the middle, the green one is actually the peptides, which we call the cancer or it, in the cancer cells, it can be a cancer new, uh, new epitope. So basically these complexes present these peptides to the cell surface. This peptides would then be recognized by uh, uh, T cell receptors. So this is kind of a uh, explanation, uh, just an illustration of this uh, protein complex looks like. So as you can see, so these peptides actually bond uh, uh, tightly with uh, by the uh, HLA class two molecules, and then this whole complex will be recognized by the T cell receptor. So our previous studies actually shed a light on how cytokines can stimulate the antigen processing presentation in tumor negative breast cancer. So basically, here the problem is that usually in uh, cancer cells, basically uh, it can't present very, in some of the cancers, including triple negative breast cancer, it can't present useful uh, cancer epitopes to recognize by T cell. So that's why when you when people found they have cancers, cancers are usually very light because the T cells or immune system fails to recognize these, cancer, these cells has been uh, uh, cancerous already. So, in our previous studies, we tried uh, interferon gamma, which is a, uh, one of the 
many types of cytokines. Um, we actually treated these triple negative breast cancer cell lines, and we found that actually by interferon gamma treatment, we can see uh, uh, more sig uh, significantly more peptides uh, presented to the cell surface. And uh, these peptides are, can be di also diverse as well. So we can see both class one and class two peptides to the cell surface. So the problem is that we still not quite sure what's the role of these protein complexes across uh, within the antigen processing presentation process. We don't know about the, the contributions of these protein complexes to the antigen processing presentation, the diverse and enhanced antigen processing that presentation treated with interferon gamma. So we hypothesized, so in this, uh, in this project, we basically hypothesized the protein complexes, uh, which regulates the mediated generation of the cancer epitopes are stimulated in terms of their abundance or composition during cytokine treatment and uh, chemotherapy in the triple negative breast cancer. So the aim, based on the hypothesis, is to leverage proteomics, transcriptomics, and system, system biology methods to identify and characterize the perturbed complexosome in interferon gamma treated and untreated triple negative breast cancer cells and tissues and investigate the role of the significantly perturbed protein complexes in cancer epitope uh, presentation. So the plan um, is to combine, uh, as you can see from the, uh, the schematic workflow. So basically we have uh, cell lines, for example, um, no additional treatment with interferon, and with interferon, interferon gamma treatment. And we use, we conducted transcriptomics experiment and proteomics uh, experiments. For transcriptomics, we're going to do uh, rna seq So we're going to get the uh, differentially expressed genes. And for a proteomics part, we're going to do uh, uh, very novel uh, uh, strategies which is called size exclusion chromatography uh, coupled with SWOS MS, which is DIA, data independent acquisition methods uh, for protein complexosome uh, profiling. So we want to combine these two methods because we can identify using uh, ICC swaths to see the protein complexes and their changes. And definitely we want to um, validate this from another uh, perspective of, of multiomics, which is transcriptomics profiling, just to see whether we can find the evidence of differential, differentially expressed genes uh, based on transcriptomic data. And we can identify these um, uh, interferon gamma treated and untreated ch significantly changes protein complexes and their differences. And then we can uh, uh, identify or verify them in triple negative uh, uh, breast cancer biopsies using APMS and the core immunoprecipitation uh, uh, experiments just to identify what is complex or real changing uh, or not. So um, the reason that we use this, as I said, is actually uh, quite normal uh, methods uh, just to, uh, this is actually a uh, uh, discovery message rather than a targeted message. So it's basically can be used to profile any changing uh, protein complexes in the given samples, cell lines and tissues. So the problem is that when we have, when we get a data set from the uh, 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 proteomics experiments, so how are we gonna uh, analyze this identify or analyze this uh, changing protein complexes. So we have several system biology approaches for uh, complexosome uh, analysis. So uh, we're going to use first uh, uh, methodology, which is called CC profiler. This is a statistical method to map uh, the protein matrix to uh, uh, public database, complex database, protein complex databases to identify uh, uh, what kind of, what protein complex that we can identify from the, from the proteomic data. And more importantly, we can use our recently published uh, PC profit methods to predict the novel protein complexes that haven't been documented in any public databases. And then most importantly, we can, we can use a Bayes uh, sort of methods to identify the changes of these protein complexes in interferon, across interferon gamma untreated and treated uh, situations. And not at least if we have enough time, we can also use another uh, system, uh, system biology approach to predict the, the functions of these novel protein complexes using our um, newly published uh, PC fund framework. So this is basically the 
whole workflow that we are going to use for uh, identify for identifying triple negative breast cancer complexes. So some of the uh, transcriptomics uh, 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 results currently we already got is actually, we actually use this, uh, we draw this volcano plot and we found that basically 1,000 1, uh, significant upregulated genes and 900 significant downregulated genes uh, when comparing uh, treated and untreated cell lines. So we also did some uh, functional enrichment analysis based on uh, these dysregulated genes. And we found that a lot of these genes actually uh, uh, related to uh, cytokines, related to uh, uh, antigen presence and presentations, which give us basically a, a high confidence that we're gonna be able to identify the protein complexes with <clears throat> these uh, uh, dysregulated uh, genes as a subunit in these complexes. So we're gonna we're gonna <clears throat> we're gonna be able to identify hundreds of proteins uh, involving these uh, uh, genes, uh, these regulated genes, identified in RNA seq data. So we actually can expect a lot of things from this project. So first is uh, this profiling is the first part systematic profiling for global landscape of protein complexes and their uh, perturbations in triple negative breast cancer. Okay. So so far we haven't seen any. Uh, 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 sys uh, systematic profiling of protein complexes in triple negative breast cancers. And also these perturbed protein complexes can serve as next generation macromolecular bio biomarkers for monitoring cytokine based triple negative cancers uh, immunotherapy. So previously, or traditionally, we're still using single protein, single protein as a biomarker. But our hypothesis is that, <clears throat> sorry, we're gonna argue that. So single protein uh, uh, biomarkers are not usually ideal or accurate for uh, determining uh, the status of the cancer, for example, or stratify uh, patients, because we believe that the protein complexes actually uh, carry more uh, functions in the body. So we think protein complex should be a next generation uh, biomarkers that can be uh, uh, used to stratify patients or indicating different stages of the cancers. And also we hypothesize this methods and workflows can uh, uh, Built in this project are actually applicable to other types of cancers and disease in general. So we can easily apply these uh, methods, this workflow to identify other cancers, uh, pro uh, protein complexes in other cancer types or in other uh, disease, or autoimmune disease, for example. So I wanna, in, and lastly, I wanna uh, stress the uh, importance of these foundings. Uh, so basically, uh, First, it's actually enable us to enable us to uh, establish the cutting edge experimental computational uh, uh, methods to uh, uh, profile protein complexes in Australia, uh, because we have not we to the best of knowledge we don't know anyone who is currently using the uh, the same uh, technology here uh, uh, in Australia to identify uh, protein complexes in uh, disease samples and cell lines. Uh, uh, personally, actually, the project also boosted my career by allowing my career trans trans uh, transition from a biomedician to assistant biologist. Um, so this year, I really uh, went to the lab and uh, uh, did a lot of experiments, which actually su surprises a lot of my colleagues. And uh, they are very happy to see my uh, transition as well, uh, supported by this uh, uh, funding. And, and also uh, working with Secure Cancer uh, has been a really uh, rewarding experience. I've been involved in the uh, the funding raising uh, uh, events and also I'm also involved in the Cure Cancer ma ma mentoring pro uh, program. Um, this is this has been really helpful in uh, uh, my career development. Uh, that's why I really want to thank the, uh, the funding agent for organizing this uh, useful event. So last but least, I want to uh, uh, thank all these colleagues that involved in this. So uh, my two uh, associate investigators who are per, uh, per, uh, Professor Tony Purcell and Professor Rudy Episode, and also the lab members in Rudy, uh, in Tony and the Rudy's labs for uh, helping me setting up this uh, method and the uh, workflow. I also want to thank the Cure Cancer Foundation Australia, um, the uh, staff I'm working with, uh, uh, they are very friendly and they are very helpful and responsive in uh, all the questions I have. And last but least, I want to thank the generous donors for their donations and uh, the two, uh, the Cure Cancer and the Monash University to support uh, uh, my research. And thank you very much. Mm -hmm.